The next step of the process is to graph your data. Now when you have a graph, essentially you need to have your independent and your dependent variable on your graph, one on each axis, so that we can see if there is a correlation or a relationship between the two. So our independent variable was cost, and our dependent variable, the one we measured, was the amount of detergent left behind. And in this case, we then also averaged that amount of detergent because we took many trials in it. So they're the two columns that you actually have to highlight here. So you have to tell Excel which ones you actually want. So to do that, you highlight, in this case, my average column, which is my dependent variable. Okay, I might actually just highlight that without its title there. You do this by holding down the control key or the command key and dragging your cursor down so that it highlights it. So to do this, you just drag your cursor down until you highlight all of your dependent variable values. Now our independent variable values are actually over in our very first column because they were over here at the beginning here. So here they are here. To select them as well, hold down your control or your command key and then drag your cursor again. Holding it down now and drag these down and that means it doesn't select the data in the middle. I just want to have cost versus average amount of oil left over. So once I've got that, I'm going to come over here so that I've got some spare space. I want it to take those two and I want them to use them in a chart. So let's go insert and you can either pick your chart or go recommended charts. Now most people would be tempted to just go bar chart here which is fine, but we were actually trying to see if there's a trend between the increasing cost of the detergent and the effectiveness. In order to really see a trend, you usually pick a line graph in that case, because as cost changes, does the effectiveness of the detergent change? And you can see that better in a line graph or even in a, a scattergram like this, which just plots both the independent and the dependent variable as dots and doesn't join them together with lines and doesn't plot them as a bar because we're just wanting to see if there's a trend. So I'm going to go OK here. I'm going to select that one because I think that helps tell my story better. And I end up with a basic chart here. Now along the bottom here we have the cost of the detergent. We need to tell it to um, put a title in there and we have the effectiveness or the change in the amount of oil that was left over. So first of all we're going to add in some titles. So I'm just going to type them in and you can see how to do it as we go. Now in order to add in elements like titles and that you can just click your plus up here and tell it what you want to add. I want to add in access titles. And now that I've got those access titles in there, the only other thing I need to do is to actually show how much error or deviation was around each one of these averages. Because these are the averages, but remember there was a big spread on some of these averages. And we want to actually show that in our chart. So this is how you go about doing it. You tell it that you want to show error bars. Now, first of all, I don't want it to show error with um, my cost and my oil. I just want to show the error in my what I was measuring, which was my change in oil. So this deviation in cost here really isn't something we need to worry about. So select those horizontal um, ones here and just go delete. And it deletes those error bars completely. I only want to show the deviation in my trial measurements either side of the average. That essentially is, remember how I said you had your average and you had deviation in your values either side of it? Well that's literally what it's showing there. So we need to get it to use our calculated error or deviation values however. So you select those little error bars there and you double click. 
and it'll go, okay, what do you want me to do with these bars? You do want both directions because it did have plus or minus from the average. You can either change your cap style, that's fine, but it's down here that we need to look at. Standard error means that it's average dual error across all of them. So it's taken that standard error there and it's got an average and that's what it's showing either side. We don't want that. We want to have our individual error amounts either side of it. So you can see which groups had the most error and which ones had the least error because each one of them was slightly different. So we need to tell it to use this here. You go custom. Specify our values. Now, I want it to go plus or minus using my standard. So I'm going to say I want it to be these values here. And that's going to be on the top side and the bottom side too. Go OK. And now it will actually adjust those values to what you calculated here. So when you step back and have a look at it, you can see that this group here, which was my $7.50 detergent, actually had a lot more error in it compared to, say, this $10 detergent up here. So this trial here had more error in it, and that dot may not be an accurate reflection of how effective that detergent was, whereas this one up here had less error in it. And that essentially allows you to paint a better picture for your reader. Now the only other thing you have to do now is add in a trend line if you want to really show if there's a correlation between the cost and the change in oil. Uh, click the plus button, select trend line, and it will actually put in a trend line. Notice it's actually stuck, stuck more to this side than down here. It's ignoring this one a little bit because of its wider amount of error and sticking closer to these ones that have small amounts of error. And that trend line shows a definite correlation between cost and effectiveness. So that needs to be something you discuss um, as you present your findings, either in a discussion or a report format. So essentially, that's how you get your data. Analyze it, find the error, plot it, put in your error lines, put in a trend line to show if there's a correlation. That is data analysis in a nutshell.